Welcome. Let's look at the event that occur at the standard angle of Louis, which is also referred to as the Manifold Standard Joint. The standard angle of Louis was first described by Alexander Louis, and it corresponds to the level of the T4 T5 thoracic vertebra. At the standard angle of Louis, we have a number of events that occur at this region. And in establishing this event, we would be looking at the mnemonic rat plant. So we'll be using each of the alphabets in establishing the events that occur at the standard angle of Louis. But of course, it's good for us to understand the details of this event. So we will not be missing it out. So let's follow through to enjoy this. For her, we have the rib and the coastal cartilage. And of course, that is for the second rib and also the second coastal cartilage. This is the configuration of the sternum. This is the manubrum. This is the body of the sternum. And this is the symphoid process. So we have the manubrosternal joint between the manubrum and the body of the sternum. And this is also called the standard angle of Louis. At this level, we have the second rib and also the second coastal cartilage. If you look up our lecture on the sternum, we've established that the second coastal cartilage is connected to the sternum around the level of the manubrosternal joint. So this, of course, is one of the events that is highlighted. And this is the second rib. And of course, the second rib is not directly connected to the sternum. We say they are connected through the coastal cartilage. And this is the second coastal cartilage that is highlighted in white. And it is through this coastal cartilage that the ribs is connected to the sternum. The first rib and the corresponding coastal cartilage is attached to the upper region. So we have the second rib and the corresponding coastal cartilage attached at this point. And of course, at the level of the standard angle of Louis, that this connection occur. And the last letter is aortic heart. Using this image, this is the heart. The heart is divided into two sides, the right side and the left side. The right side we know is filled with deoxygenated blood, while the left side is filled with oxygenated blood. This oxygenated blood already has oxygen in it and is ready to be transported to other regions of the body. And there is no other vessel that will take it to other regions of the body apart from the iota. So we have the iota that is seen as a continuation of the left ventricular region of the heart. This is the left region where the oxygenated blood filled in. And in the lower part is where we have the ventricle. And the hiatus we emerge from this region for it to transport oxygenated blood to other regions of the body. So this is the iota that begins from this region and is highlighted in black. This region is the initial segment of the iota and this is called the ascending iota. After the ascending iota, the iota will hack and this is highlighted in green, and this is the arc of aorta. The arc of aorta will further continue to become the descending aorta that is still highlighted in black. But the arc of aorta is at the level of the standard angle of Louis. So this is another event that also occurs at the standard angle of Louis. The next letter is T, and T is trachea bifurcation. This is trachea highlighted in green. And we know that trachea is a single pipe that runs. And as it runs down, it will later bifurcate at the carina region. It bifurcates into two because we have two lungs and it needs to feed air into the two lungs because what the trachea transports is air. So the region or the level where it bifurcates into two to supply air into the two lungs also tallies with the level of the standard angle of Louis. So this is the trachea as an initial single tube, which would for that subdivide or bifurcate into the right primary bronchus and we have the left primary bronchus. These two bronchi are to supply the two lungs with air. So going further, the next word is plant. We've treated rats. So plant P represents the pulmonary trunk bifurcation. So there's also the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk. But let's see how this goes. This is the heart. We know that the right side of the heart is filled with deoxygenated blood, while the left is filled with oxygenated blood. This is deoxygenated blood that we need to be transported to the lungs where it will be oxygenated. And that is the logic. And for it to be taken to the lungs where it will be oxygenated, it will be carried or transported through the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery. So this is the pulmonary trunk highlighted in green. And of course, the pulmonary trunk will also need to bifurcate into two because we have two lungs where it will be trapping the oxygen from. So the level also where it's bifurcated into the right 
and also the left pulmonary artery also tallies with the level of the standard angle of Lewis because it also needs to bifurcate so as to receive oxygen from the lungs. And of course we have two lungs, so it needs to also bifurcate into two so that oxygen that is being supplied into the lungs by the trachea will not be taken up by blood that is supplied by the pulmonary artery. Then going further, we have L. L is for the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. And the loop of this nerve is what is seen around this region. We know that the recurrent laryngeal nerve is a branch of the vagus nerve. So this is the vagus nerve highlighted in blue. And we have a branch carved out from it that's called the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the loop of this nerve, where it loops to move upward to supply the larynx at the upper part of the body also tallies with the standard angle of Lewis. So we have another hell that is called the ligamentum arteriosum. The hell is like double. We already have one hell as the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the second L is the ligamentum arteriosum. This ligamentum arteriosum is highlighted in green, and this structure tends to connect the pulmonary trunk with the hack of aorta. Because the pulmonary trunk bifurcates at the level of the standard angle of Lewis, we also have the hack of aorta at the level of standard angle of Lewis. So for a ligament to be connecting these two structures, it will also be seen at the same level. So we have the ligamentum arteriosum also at the level of the standard angle of Lewis. This ligament is an embryonic remnant, which later becomes or transform into a ligament that is seen to connect the pulmonary trunk with the hack of aorta. Of course, it's seen also at the level of the standard angle of Louis. Then we have the azygous vein. Of course, the azygous vein drains into the superior vena cava also at the level of the standard angle of Louis. So we need to know the details of how these events are formed, not only establishing the different words from the mnemonic, but specifically what event occur around the standard angle of Lewis. We already established that this is the right side of the heart, this is the left side. We know that the right side is filled with deoxygenated blood. And deoxygenated blood is received at the upper chamber of the heart through the vena cava, which is the largest vein in the body. These veins collect all venous blood from different regions of the body and is being emptied into the upper right part of the heart. And it is through the vena cava that it does this and this is the vena cava lighted in green. The vena cava is further subdivided into two. We have the inferior vena cava and we have the superior vena cava. The inferior vena cava will receive venous drainage from the lower part of the body, while superior receives from the upper part. Around the superior vena cava, we have the emptying of the azygous vein that is highlighted in black, and this is the azygous vein. So at this level, it empties venous blood into the superior vena cava, which will also merge with venous blood from the inferior vena cava which would finally be emptied into the vena cava before it now goes into the right side of the heart. So at the level of the standard angle of Louis, it's also where you have the acygos vein draining into the superior vena cava. Then the N, N is nerves. So you have cardiac plexus also seen along the standard angle of Louis. And we have T, which is the thoracic dot. The thoracic dot around the level of the standard angle of Louis passes from the right side to the left side behind the esophagus. So this is the thoracic dot. And at this level is where you see it passing from the right side to the left side. So these are some of the events that are seen around the level of the standard angle of Lewis. And we've used acronym RAT plants to establish this. We can also add to this, some have said that we have over 20 events around the level of the standard angle of Lewis. So let's add to this list. The others could include that we have the demarcation of the superior and inferior mediastinum. This is the superior mediastinum and this is the inferior mediastinum. This is like the cavity that is created within the thoracic space. So if the superior mediastinum is demarcated from the inferior mediastinum at the level of the standard angle of Lewis. Then we also have the level of the fourth intervertebral disc, which is seen between T4 and T5 thoracic vertebra. So these are the thoracic vertebra highlighted in blue. And in between the thoracic vertebra, we have the intervertebral disc that is highlighted in yellow. And between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebrae, we have the intervertebral disc. And this is the intervertebral disc. The fourth intervertebral disc is also seen at the standard angle of Lewis. We also have the end of the ascending aorta and also the beginning of the descending aorta. Remember we said that this is the ascending part of the aorta highlighted in black and it hacks at this region before it now becomes the descending aorta. So the ascending aorta will end 
at the level of the standard angle of Lewis, and also the descending aorta will begin at the level of the standard angle of Lewis. And this is the end of the ascending aorta, which tallies with the level of the manubrosternal joint. And also we have the beginning of the descending aorta, which of course tallies with the manubrosternal joint. So we may decide to add to this list so that we all can learn together. And I'll be expecting your responses to this in the comment section. So thanks for watching.